Peace and blessings, everyone. Welcome back. I'm here today to continue on with Ethne's hashtag 31 days of Tarot. I believe I've left off at day number, put on my glasses, day number 11. So today I'm going to continue on with day 12. That question is, what started me reading Tarot and why did I continue? I think that this will sum it up. There are dreams that cannot be, and there are storms I could not weather. I had a dream my life would be so different from this hell I'm living. So different now from what it seemed. Now life has killed the dream I dreamed. See, many years ago when I felt that my life was in the toilet. I'd stood there looking at it, trying to understand why I considered myself a good person, a faithful person, a loyal person, and yet I just couldn't seem to catch a break. And I needed to understand what was going on. And yes, I had discovered Tarot back in the 80s, but I really didn't start working with it until I would say maybe 1993, 94. Um, you know, when you're at the end of your rope, you try to reach out for something, anything. And because I needed to feel that I was in control, I reached for the Tarot and I started on my journey towards self-discovery and self-empowerment. So on to day number 13. What was your best and worst memorable Tarot moment for 2017? Well, um, my best moment is when I held a Tarot workshop 101 and the amount of people that showed up was beyond my expectation. And it just continued to grow into something that is wonderful and beautiful to this day that we have these weekly meetings. Uh, we have our own little community. My worst experiences, my worst memories may have been um, when I was doing a reading for a client and I was telling her, sharing with her my insight, the messages I was getting, and all of that, and she slammed her hand on the table and told me that I was absolutely wrong. I was absolutely wrong because another reader had told her differently. And that caused me to, number one, become afraid because I realized just how emotional she was. I was only a little bit concerned for about 20, 30 seconds. And then I calmed myself down. I managed to calm her down. And I told her that if I was wrong, I would gladly reimburse her double what she had paid me. About two weeks later, she returned to me with an apology. And that, which was my worst moment of 2017, actually turned out to be my best moment. So on to day number 14, share your favorite divination aside from Tarot. Well, I'm going to introduce you to three of my precious. This is Kalista. Fluorite. Gorgeous, isn't she? And this is Aurora. Pure obsidian. And this is Petra. Petrified wood. And I use these for scrying. So obviously scrying is one of my favorite methods. But I don't use these for that. I use something called pyromancy. And you probably cannot see the candle flames here. Let's see. Oh, there's one. 
to um, pyromancy, any form of fire or flame. Ceromancy, when I read the uh, flame itself. And capnomancy, when I read the smoke that has been emitted from the flame. Another form of divination that I like to use, um, I grew up with this, is called um, lacanomancy. And that is oil on water. And I grew up reading this, um, learning how to use this form of divination before anything else and trusting in this. So I didn't grow up with these fancy names that it has nowadays. We just know to pour oil on water and watch how the movement of the fluids interact with each other. On to day number 15, do I have a deck for personal use only? Why or why not? And yes, I have a few decks for personal use only. Um, the first one is called the Maduna Tear. And this is based on a Egyptian oracular system. It's something that I've been working with for many years. And perhaps in 2018, it may be something that I might share with the public. It's very deep for personal development. It's read much, much diff diff uh, differently than most divinatory tools that I've worked with. The second form of divination that I have for myself is the cartouche cards. This is what the backs of them look like. Um, this also works with the energy of Tehuti. Let's see. It's another system that I rather enjoy. It gives me the answers quickly, um, but very poignantly, very much with as much in depth as I can need and I also have two Orisha decks that I use let me see where's my other one oh. this is one Orisha deck that I use this is not uh, that one that is mass produced this has been given to me uh, especially for my work. Oops, I have it upside down. That I do. So this is strictly for personal use. And then I have this deck that was put out by a sister. Her name is Levita LaRue. Ibaye, may she rest in peace. She transitioned during the holidays. She created a tarot deck. Um, I guess you would call it a tarot deck, a divination deck. For those of us who are Risha devotees, it has the major arcana. The only difference is that she has taken out cards numbers through, 2 through 10. And she has enabled or labeled all of those expressions to the highest form, and this is where you see the number 10 for each of those elements. Um, but this is a deck that I have used for personal use only. It's something that I may take to the public towards the end of this year. We'll see. And question number 16, do I read reversals? Why or why not? Yes, I do read reversals when they come up. Um, it's not an intentional thing. I always shuffle my cards and hand them to the client uh, with them all upright. But when the client has them in their hands, you know, many of them say, oh, I'm not good at shuffling. And to put them at ease, I just say, do what you feel. Shuffle how you want to. Some of the cards come up reversed. When I see that, I explain to them that I usually don't read reversals, but because they fell this particular way, I would read the energies and um, ex give them the expression of the card at that moment, the meaning of the card, how it plays in its reverse, and then I'll also turn it upright. 
until we continue to build on the story because that is what a reading is supposed to do. It's basically telling a story, giving some sort of guidance. So I don't shy away from reversals. It's not something that I encourage with my students. I do ask that they begin to read the upright. I do ask them to see beyond the reversal as being the opposite, just being the opposite of the upright. Um, to understand the energetic play, how that reverse card may interact with the other cards that surrounds it. And that sometimes you just have to switch to another deck. If you have a spread that has come out all reversals and you swore that you shuffled it correctly and everything was correct, get another deck. Ask the same question. See if the reversals come up the same way then I think that there could be something to that. Most of the time, I just think that it's just the way things have been handled. It's not that deep and intense for me. So on to the next question and the final question. Oh, yes, day 17. Draw, paint, or sketch your tarot favorite card. Oh, your favorite tarot card. Wow, it's early in the morning. Anyway... I don't draw. I dance. I sew. But I do not draw. Um, but I'm going to give you a piece of poetry that will give you, hopefully, an idea of the card that I'm talking about. So what I'd like you to do is close your eyes, sit back, and listen to my words. Close your eyes. Yes, you. Close your eyes. Life can be sunshine on peaceful days with bright blue skies. Or life can be raindrops that fall like tears squeezed from your eyes. Life can be the heaven you'll only reach by going through hell. Since you won't know that you're happy, if you've not been sad as well. Life can teach hard lessons, but you'll be wise once you know that even roses need both sunshine and a touch of rain to grow. And with that, I will say goodbye until my next video. Stay blessed.